Welcome back to the Greensboro Coliseum. Time for semifinal number two. What a night we have in store for you. It's Notre Dame and Duke. The 2015 ACC Tournament Semifinals. Notre Dame and Duke combined to take 110 shots from the field. But the night's most memorable shot wasn't taken by the Irish or the Blue Devils. It wasn't even televised. It was taken by a fan. His name was Scott Park. Scott, when you are ready, take your shot for $1 million. I looked out there and saw that they were going to do a half-court shot, and I thought, people love half-court shots. Reporter Ryan Fagan was watching the game from his seat in press row and captured the moment on his cell phone. I'll try to get a guy making a shot for a million dollars. That'll be great. I'll throw it on Vine. It'll get a couple views. And then when he missed the shot, I thought, well, that wasn't what I was going for, but people like that too. Fagan wrote a quick item on the hapless misfire and posted the video to Vine, the then popular social media app, where users shared six second long clips. You can guess what happened next. Pretty quickly it went viral. Um, I mean, it was within two minutes that I realized it was gonna be a big deal. Millions laughed at these six seconds of Scott Park's life. No one knew anything about the rest of it. Come on, guys. You got this seven thing in sight. Oh, that was charge. Good Scott way, Park is just like you or me, a sports fan who really loves his college basketball. Defense. Where's the foul? Where was the walk? Scott was raised on Tobacco Road Ball, on Dean Smith and David Thompson, on Jimmy Valvano and Michael Jordan. Like you or me, he loves March Madness. Louisville's got some, they got some studs. I just don't know that much yeah. about Northern Ireland. Scott loves his team, the North Carolina State Wolfpack even if it wasn't his team until he enrolled there as a student. I grew up as a little Carolina kid. I went to Dean Smith's basketball camp three years in a row. I learned a lot of stuff there. When I decided to go to NC State, that was it. Go Wolfpack from then on. Scott married Ellen Long in 1983, the same year that Valvano's cardiac pack won their improbable national title over Houston. Ellen's a Tar Heel, can take some for lunch tomorrow. but he loves her anyway. The only problem is when we have to uh, play each other. There's been many games where I'm upstairs and he's downstairs when it's a State Carolina game playing, so. <laughs> That's a mixed marriage is what we call that. That's exactly right. <laughs> yeah, well, how's, that, how's that going? Uh, it's working out pretty well. She's, uh, she has a lot of qualities that overcame where she went to school. Scott got a job with the Navy. Ellen worked as a family counselor. Together, they raised three daughters and a son in their Virginia Beach home. It was the all-American life. But in 2007, Scott, then 49 years old, underwent surgery to replace one of his heart valves. They did the operation on a Friday, came home on a Tuesday, went back on the Thursday. Something wasn't right, I was sick. They couldn't figure out what in the world was wrong with him. We had about 12 doctors trying to diagnose what's going on. And they had tried many different things, but his kidneys and his, his liver were just going worse and worse. The wheels started falling off. I had organs starting to shut down, and the doctors were perplexed. Ellen did a great job of protecting me. I do remember at one point, I asked her, am I gonna die? Mysterious microscopic clotting found in Scott's bloodstream sent doctors desperately sifting through medical journals. Their diagnosis was catastrophic antiphospholipid syndrome. The disease is lethal because um, it can basically shut down all the organ systems. If that cascade worsens, that ultimately can cause death. Known as CAPS, the disease had only been diagnosed roughly 400 times, ever. 
a regimen of steroids, plasma replacement, immunity boosters, and an experimental treatment for Johns Hopkins worked. Scott survived, but he'd suffered total kidney failure and would spend the next two years on dialysis, desperately waiting for a transplant. It was 2009, the year a man named Bucky Blanton joined Scott and Ellen's church. I walk into the Sunday school class where he was teaching and um, they were sitting there talking about, you know, going to get tested for who's going to be a match to give me a kidney. And I was like, I'll go get tested. I said, like that? You make a decision to, be a, be a, to give up an organ? He said, for you? I said, yeah. He said, I'll do it. Can I go tomorrow? I knew that somebody was going to step up. Somebody was going to be there for him. Somebody was going to... was going to save his life. I just didn't know that person was going to be me. Blanton was a match. Look at me, Baxter. The procedure took place July 13th, 2009. I woke up and I rolled over and Ellen and Dr. Montgomery, the transplant surgeon, were standing there. And he came over and said, uh, congratulations. I said, for what? He said, you're a pioneer. How's that? He said, you're the first person in the world to have a transplant with caps. It's never been done before. That's first ever in the world. It even made the pages of the prestigious New England Journal of Medicine. New ground's broken. New lives can be changed. New lives can be saved. Water. Did you get enough waters? Yes. Got it? Well, the doctors have said I have to make this trip the rest of my life. And for six years, on every other Friday, Scott made the 10 hour round trip from his home in Virginia Beach to Baltimore, receiving treatment to keep his blood from clotting again. Deep breath. He also took some 39 pills every day. The years of treatment took a toll on Scott's body, but they also kept him alive, and his life returned to normal until one night in February 2015. We're watching basketball together, um, and during halftime, it comes up on on TV. It says register for Haviland's uh, half court million dollar shoot or something like that, and you can win a trip to all expense paid to the ACC tournament. And all you got to do is text this number in. And so I said, let's do that. Guy called me on a Thursday. He said, you're our grand prize winner. Take a million dollar shot, half court shot, and uh, I said, well, God, that sounds good. We just found a, a local park, and, and so he could just shoot a couple times and see. And we already knew that it would be a miracle if it was to go all the way. I mean, it would be a miracle for anybody to get it in. I thought about, you know, maybe I should tell him I, I really shouldn't do this, but that'd be quitting. And uh, Jimmy V said, don't give up. So I, I don't think I'm going to give up. I do remember getting out on the middle of the court and, and thinking, boy, these lights are bright. Man, this is, this is where it really happens. This is where they really play ball. Scott, when you are ready, take your shot for $1 million. What I heard was the awe. Oh. I heard some booze in the background, and really, it just kind of made me laugh. Uh, they don't know. They don't know my circumstance. Neither did reporter Ryan Fagan, who posted the shot to Vine. I had no idea. I mean, obviously, I had no idea. I wouldn't have done it if I had any idea. And neither did the millions who clicked, watching this six-second loop over and over. Millions laughed at Scott's expense. Some openly mocked him. Scott's friends took notice. To see all the comments online and seeing people just kind of, you know, pile on, I just felt like somebody had to say something to, to stand up for Scott. 
I just sent a simple two-line email that there was more to the story than what a simple headline or a bunch of social media responses knew about. Once I got that first email, I felt awful. And I knew that something had to happen. I had to try to do something to make it right. Fagan reached out to Scott and wrote a new story about the life that he and the rest of the internet knew nothing about. He apologized. I told him, don't worry about it, about what he said. We're all square. There's obviously so much more to everything that we see on the surface. Uh, sometimes in cases like Scott's, it's this great, inspiring story that you would have never expected to come about the way it did. Being able to catch the basketball and finish. That's the shot. He's, um, he jumped from the middle of the lane. Yeah, I know. He that shot was, that from his chest. Know, that, was, that was crazy. Catch, go up, and so one week after going viral, Scott Park is right back where he belongs, sitting with friend Bucky Blanton, the man who donated Scott his kidney. You got this seven thing in points, sight. Seven points. Keep it close. We're about to go on a run. Keep it close. Watching his beloved Wolfpack play Bucky's LSU Tigers in the NCAA tournament. Make it a good one. Got to get something. Come on, Lacey. Seconds left. Dribble, drive into the lane. Shot fake. Now gets it off. On the turn around. On the rim. It's good. Yes! yes! One tip. That's it. That was woo! Come on, man. I know that breaks your heart. I know it does. I've been dying right now. I feel your pain. I'm feeling happy, but I'm feeling your pain. This is where we thought our story would wrap up. A happy ending. A lesson learned. How about that wolf pack? How about that wolf pack? How about that wolf pack? But you see, just as you can't sum up a man's whole life in a six second vine, you can't sum it up in 15 minutes of television either. If Scott Park has taught us anything, it's this. In September 2015, six months after the shot, the clotting that caused his other organs to shut down had now attacked his brain. He'd suffered multiple strokes. Because of the rareness of his blood disorder, there really isn't a whole lot of predictions, but Scott is a, he's obviously he stayed alive through it all. He's a fighter. Doctors told Scott's family to prepare for the worst. Good. Yes, good, 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 and relax. Scott, you couldn't do that last week. I couldn't? No. Tell everybody, how are you doing? Doing great. Uh, I, I think overall doing great. You're still watching the wolf pack, I assume. You got that right. How's that going? Well, uh, don't doesn't seem like they've gotten very far, <laughs> but I'm still pulling for them. But Scott is still a long way from better. There you go. He can't walk. Beautiful. He's lost the use of his right arm. Do it again. Push it back in my hands. You can't give Push up. Just don't. Just can't. Just can't give up. Eventually, Scott did walk with assistance. He also returned home. For the next seven years, Scott fought for his family, his friends, and his team. Who are you watching, Scott? Wolfpack. Wolfpack. In mid-January 2023, during one of his last lucid days, he watched his Wolfpack stun Miami and start a push into the top 25. The Pack wins it! 83, 81, in overtime! Go, Wolfpack! I love you. I love you. <laughs> Scott Park passed away on January 30th at the age of 64. His life was cut short. 
but what a life it was. He got to see his beloved Wolfpack win a national championship. He married his one true love. He saw his children grow and have children of their own. And once, he got a chance to win a million bucks at half court of a college basketball game. It didn't go in, but he laughed about it. In other words, Scott Park gave life his best shot. And that's something worth sharing. If it took a missed shot, if it took just a little bit of online embarrassment to get this story out there, it was worth it, right? Absolutely. Count me in, let's do it again. Yes, sir.